Hi, this is David McCann for WebTNG. In this quick video, I want to take a look at a free open source tool for testing that your web pages are responsive. The tool is the Responsively app, and it's available online at responsively.app website. Practically, with WordPress, everyone creates their pages desktop first. And then, if we remember, we check the pages on different screen sizes. In the past, I've used paid expensive tools like Browser Stack, or more commonly, the tools built into the web browser, something like the Google Dev Tools. So while testing your web pages on different screen sizes is a must, it's not always easy to do and can sometimes be either costly or clunky. So I was quite pleased to discover the Responsively app. It is actually a desktop application that you download and install. It's available for Macintosh, Windows, or Linux. One thing I noted is when I installed it, I had to give it permissions to access the network. So that's something to keep in mind. There's not actually a lot on the website. There's a list of features, there's a roadmap, and then there are links to browser extensions. And we'll look at that in a minute. I didn't find any documentation or tutorial, but that's okay because it's pretty straightforward anyway. Once you download and install it, it is an app, and this is the interface here. You see it is a dark mode interface, and it starts out loading the Google homepage on four different devices, an iPhone X for iOS, a Pixel 2 for Android, an iPad, and a generic laptop. Even though this isn't actually a browser, in some ways it acts like a browser. For example, we type in the URL of the web page that we want to check. For example, here's the WebTNG homepage. There's a back and forward button, a refresh button, and a link to your homepage. Over here, you can add a bookmark, delete storage, delete cookies, or set a page as your homepage. There is an option to switch color scheme which didn't do much for me. There's an option to scroll down, scroll up, take a screenshot, tilt the device, mute all devices, inspect an element, toggle touch mode, and zoom in or out. Over each device frame, there's an option to open the dev tools for that frame, to take a screenshot, to take a full page screenshot, to tilt the device, or disable event mirroring, and to maximize the device. These three dots here just give you the option to mute a device. Now, event mirroring means when you click on a link in one of the browser frames, they are all updated. For instance, if I click on this link, you can see that it loads those pages one by one into each of the browser frames. And we can see what the page looks like in each size device. Pretty cool, huh? Along the left side here, we have an option to change the devices that we want to use. The layout where we want a horizontal, a flex grid, or individual layout, or quick filters for the operating systems or device size. Here, there are user preferences. Here it is possible to install some developer extensions. However, this isn't really a web browser, so not all of them will work. There's a little note, caution note here that not all extensions are gonna work. And then here's an option to clear the network cache or to simulate different network speeds or being online or offline. This tool is pretty simple and straightforward and does exactly what it's supposed to do. So there's not a lot to show here, but there is one more feature to point out, and that is I have installed the browser extension here for Responsively, which opens the current URL in the application. So I click that and I open it. And what that does is it opens a new version of Responsively to that web page. So this has been my quick introduction and walkthrough of the Responsively app. There's a text version of the video available on the WebTNG website, along with other resources and tutorials and walkthroughs. I hope you find this tool useful. Thank you for watching.